Out of Heroes Heart, this is Kyle Ferguson. Today, I'm sitting down with Maka of Pre-Workout Power. This is Verse Baby Makers, a Storm Division game, game two on Spider Queen. Maka, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's nice to talk to more healers, more supports, the backbone of the team, keeping everyone going. And this is a unique game because it's on Anduin, who I haven't got to do yet. And in fact, my most played hero this season. So I'm, I'm excited for my own personal reasons here to get your thoughts on the hero. We have Rhaegar, Stukov, these premier bands, and then Anduin's just like the go-to. How did this happen? Uh... Anduin is just a over around pretty good healer. She has decent he, he has decent healing and especially this game it was super good for us because we have stitches and stitches Anduin is a very very dangerous combo as you will see in a bit where the gorge pull will come through and it's really strong because usually to counter the gorge you CC the stitches and try to stop him from kidnapping your teammates but Anduin pull just gives an unstoppable pulls him away from the team and just secures a kill. Oh, so th that's not a meme thing. That That is 100% worth a, what is this? A, a 70 second cooldown. I guess Gorge is pretty long. Yeah, it's definitely a really viable combo as it's, you can see these, uh, this combo being picked in in houses or like, or like high GM games as well. It's really just really hard to counter. Usually biggest stitches counter would be something like the Nubarak where Whenever Stitches gets a gorge, you just cocoon the target or gets on top of him and stun him. But Anduin just totally denies that. Do you remember where in the draft you picked up Anduin here? Because the Anubrak is on the enemy side. Uh, I would assume it with the Stitches or after the Stitches. Yeah. I don't remember, but... No worries, no worries. It would be like that. So there we saw you do a little double rotate with the uh, Tychus there in order to get the camp. The rest of the team showed up because they were basically pushed out. Blaze way down in the solo lane, not going to be taking any camps. What is Anduin's role without the stitches? Like, why why pick Anduin over other healers? Uh, definitely Anduin's biggest talking point is his trait. His healing is, I would say, lower than lower than average. And his CC is his follow up is just a route that's pretty slow and it's not that reliable. But his pull is definitely the strongest part of his kit. It really denies a win condition on some against against certain comps. And like I said, in this comp with stitches, it creates our own win con. So usually, you pick Anduin just purely for his trade. It does seem like a powerful bit of CC though, as as. CCs have been contested as bruisers have kind of taken over the role of tanks in some meta. Anduin came in with just a root. Uh, and it, nothing too fancy about it other than it's slow. Compared to Malfurion, it seems a very effective CC. Yeah, Malfurion would be a way stronger follow-up healer and also heals, I would say, maybe 30-40% more than Anduin would, usually. So we got some but, talents coming in here, and at level one, you picked up the Even-Handed Blessing. I see a lot of light well, so tell me about Even-Handed Blessing. Even-Handed Blessing is just compared to the other two talents, the most consistent one. And also, so it is more consistent than light well, because light well forces your teammate to group up, or they have to stand in the light well for a certain amount of time. And its cooldown is also relatively long. But even handed blessings just I think I didn't do the math exactly, but I think it doubles your Q healing basically if you keep like healing different targets. And it definitely heals more than or gives more healing or protection than the W at level one as well. And we see this little graphic here for those not in the know where you have a, a blight ball, which is basically noting who hasn't been healed last time. Yep. And then level four, you end up getting piercing light, which is the go-to. Is it strictly because of the spell power working into healing? Is it that level 20 combo? When did this become so in vogue? 
I think it was mainly Anduin's level fours are actually pretty. I'd say it's a weak tier for Anduin. Mm. Like all four or three times are not something that are super strong. I would say personally, my standard go to would be actually Moral Compass. Oh. It, yeah, I think Moral Compass is just a general good talent. The auto attack works well with your passive and the range. So as Anduin, like I said, your main strength is your pull. But if you're not auto attacking, you're also missing a part of your passive with the Pursuit by Grace, which gives a healing every time you auto attack. But at the same time, you don't want to be always be in range because you want to pull your allies to safety and the attack range actually gives you more of a space for you to pull your teammates and also weave in some auto attacks. Wait. But this game I went piercing because the enemy team basically has four melee characters and it would be easy for him to get value out of that. I had no idea. Was this a bacon after release? When did Pursued by Grace become a a trait? I, I didn't even know this text was here. <laughs> I think it might be after the rework, but I am not too sure. Like the mini rework where they moved around his talents around. So that's an interesting risk reward kind of play style because so much of what you're up to is staying in the proper position because if you grab somebody with Leap of Faith, you have to make sure you're in a good position so they end up in a good position. So auto attacking seems really dangerous. Yeah, exactly. So most of the time you still don't want to auto attack, but when you're allowed to, it can make a difference. And those two talons there, and the one you talked about, Moral Compass, shoots out an auto attack at the end of the Divine Star, giving you that little bit of heal by people chilling by you. That's wild. And the attack range to actually maybe get out some auto attacks. I can't believe I never knew about this. Well, I guess it is tiny healing, but it all adds up, right? And you were mentioning that Anduin doesn't do a ton of healing in the first place between cooldowns and all that. So that's a great way to augment him. Exactly. Level seven, you got Desperate Prayer. Activate to instantly heal an allied hero for 555 at level 10, uh, but kneel for two seconds unable to act uh i think that's prepare is also the standard talent for this tier it's just a like a mini burst heal and it, it also helps with the fact that end one's healing numbers are pretty low so that helps with keeping your teammates up or saving them from danger and the other two are just not as impressive in most cases Sometimes I go Blast Recovery when you're against comms where you know you'll be jumped on most of the time, like maybe on maps like Curse where you don't have the walls behind you all the time and you're against like Genji, Murden, and it always gets value. I would sometimes take that over it, but Desperate Prayer is, just helps cover up anyone's low healing numbers. What about something like a long range poke, like maybe Asmodan or Chromie? Would Blessed Beca Recovery be the choice there, or are you just not pressured, therefore another talent is better? I still think in that case, uh, Desperate Player is better. Because for sustained heal, your level 1 actually does really well for a sustained healing. So level 7 is there to cover like the burst heal. Are you talking much in the comms here, or are you on Anduin more responsive? Uh, mainly, I'm just calling out uh, light bombs. But yeah, mostly Anduin's drop is more responsive. Like you pull after you see the gorge, you pull when you see someone's in danger. The only main thing you need to call out is, yeah, the light bomb. Even your root is just mainly a follow up. You can see this game a lot of times, I just root to follow up the hook. Like, I don't really look for active roots as it's slow, it's not reliable, and you have to walk up. So the root is mainly just also a reactive tool or to counter engage as well. So are so you're basically trusting your stitches to get the hook and firing a root where something might happen, whether or not it Yeah. Does. That's fascinating. You basically have to trust the hook. So if yeah. he throws out a hook, you just launches it if it doesn't then basically your route will be up back on uh back off cd when the hook is back up again as well so what's the 
what's kind of the value equation in your mind for a good light bomb? Is it just like here you have kind of this dive enemy team. There's a Nubarak, Dahak is buzzing around, Mayav's going in, Rhaegar. Just stun as many people as possible, or is there something else you're looking for with the shielding? Well, I think ma light bomb's main usage is the best usage is definitely for a follow up engage. So you want to use it on your tank or the person that is engaging as a follow up CC. Like in this case, it's off of gorge. In other cases, like a nerve wrap, you just want to follow up with the stuns. Using light bomb as like a defensive tool is viable, but it's uh, suboptimal compared to using it as a engage tool. Since you only get the shield if it stuns someone, but if you're using it using it to keep someone alive, they could just walk out of it and they don't get the shield, you wasted your ultimate. But as an engage tool, if someone's stunned and you could follow up with the light bomb stun, then it just gets its full value. It gets the shield, you get the stun, you get the damage. So in that situation, you had light bomb available, but you chose to full Kael'thas instead because that's just what was going to happen uh, before yeah. effective in the first place. So that was the suboptimal version of uh, like light bomb usage where I used to save Tychus, mm. but it's it did its job. You know, it saved him. It 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 forces the Haka to walk away from auto range. Also, my F. And if they if they try. If they decide to stay in range to hit Tychus, they would have get stunned. So as the game so develops it's... here, has yeah, go ahead. has Anduin become weaker? Are there more things you're afraid of on the enemy side, or are you starting to move with more confidence and position aggressively? I think as Anduin, Anduin doesn't really get stronger like based on his like numbers or talents, but it gets stronger in a sense where where late game. The, the more the late game goes, uh, each ki kill is more valuable. And each time you save someone with your trait, it becomes much more valuable than it would be if you save someone early game, which is like a 10, maybe a 10 second death, death timer. But in the late game, it would maybe like end the game if you just die and they could just boss off a of 5v4 or something like that. So I would say end in late game, you would be even less aggressive and just look for the pulls and follow up with engages. Yeah, you're, you're here with a lot trying of, to auto attack. You're with a lot of skilled players, so there's very little reason for Anduin to be lane clearing, but it is kind of interesting seeing just how far you are back in a Storm League situation where we might go, you know, smack the lane a little bit. Do you play Anduin ever in Storm League? Uh, yeah, Anduin is one of my go-to healers in Storm League as well, okay. since... He, like... I said earlier, he doesn't really rely on too much coordination. Like, you pull someone that's in danger, you root someone off, uh, tank CC, where it's mostly reactive. And yeah, saving people in Storm League is uh, that's a thing that happens a lot. Where, <laughs> whereas, like, you know, in a competitive or like in an NGS game where people are less likely to walk up and be in danger. There, during your desperate prayer, you had everything else on cooldown. Is that a, a rule you try to stick to, or desperate prayers need to happen when they need to happen? Don't don't worry about it too much. I would say you would always, in your spell rotation, you would always, always want your desperate prayer to be the last thing you cast. So, in theory, a, per a perfect spell rotation would be throwing out your W, and then channel your Q and immediately use Desperate Prayer. That's like the best like burst heal rotation because your W takes time to travel. It has to go out and come back. Your Q time has your Q has a channel time, but your Desperate Prayer goes out immediately. So if you cast your Desperate Prayer first, then cast your other two spells, the other two would come out like way later. So my rule of thumb is just always use your Desperate Prayer last, and you pretty much only use it to save someone in trouble instead of trying to use it to sustain like during rotations or lane clear. Your build here is developed in such a way that you picked all the pictures for the leap of faith. This is what I always see. It's what I do because I'm just copying other people. <laughs> what, <laughs> what led you to stack these talents? Is this the go-to every game? Uh, I would say 
for me, I 100% just go double trade 1316 every time. Since, like I said, like you pick Anduin almost strictly because of the trade. And having two two trades at 16 is a very powerful as it was like a 20 talent before, before they reworked him. And now you just get at 16, you get two trades that is the reason that you pick this hero. And 13 just helps you, it just makes the your trade stronger. You get movement speed if you have it up, so you can get in good positions to pull more often. And it also gives you a little bit of a healing on top of it. That's a very simple, I love that great way of putting it. Like, it, there was no other reason you took Anduin. Of course you want two charges of the thing you took Anduin to do. Exactly. So you guys are getting on the core here. It's being hammered down, but before we let it explode, what level 20 would you have gone? Uh, I would have went Inner Fire, the Light Bomb upgrade. Oh, is this a Stitches thing? I think it's just the most consistent ultimate. So, like I said earlier, Light Bomb, you use it in two ways, to follow Engage on a tank, or try to save someone that is in danger and movement speed and armor perfectly like fits in both scenarios. If you have a light bomb on your tank, it, it he gets movement speed where you can, you know, CC them in a better position, run at them one of the back line or something, and the armor just helps them helps them be tankier. And to save someone, they could just run away and not die with your 50 armor. And I just think the 20 upgrade is just the best. It's the most consistent 20 upgrade. I think uh, Sentry is good as well if you take the Pierce level 4. But as you see this game, I only got 3 stacks. That means like I'm not getting too much value off it. And yeah, just it's just more safe and more consistent rather than like it being super strong. That's a good way to think of it. You know, basically, if you take the Pierce, it makes this 20 more powerful with Sentry. But... Here you go, look at your numbers, say, you know what, I'm actually not doing that, let me go something else. Well, since we brought it up with the trait here and the Pursued by Grace auto tax healing, is there any unique interaction with Varian's Legacy? Do those dots do anything worth having? Uh, the dots don't heal themselves. Like, they, they don't proc the Pursued by Grace because it just sets basic attack against enemy heroes, uh, okay. I think. But... I kind of like Varian's Legacy in certain Stormly games where I get to pick, like, like is it level four? I like to go the Moral Compass with attack range, and level seven I even go Blessing, Blessed Recovery. So I'm like super safe myself. So these two talents makes me able to walk up to auto attack with safety. Like I have good range, and if someone jumps on me, I'll get the Blessed Recovery, and on top of that, the Varian's Legacy also gives a little bit of healing even though it doesn't proc the pursuit by grace i still get the heal off like just the talent itself so i could just put in decent damage and healing as well and i kind of like that some in certain games where i feel more comfortable walking up auto attacking but most of the time it's just an ultimate upgrade for holy word salvation is that just kind of like a mosh pit sort of thing it's really good in lower leagues where it won't be interrupted, but here in Storm League and CCL, just not viable? Uh, yeah, I think it's the same boat with Mosh, but it's still, it's the issue with it is just consistency as well. Like in higher leagues, people draft CC and they will know to save their CC for your ultimate. Like even just a Tykes grenade could just mm -hmm. cancel your ultimate. But there are niche cases where you just need to block one instance of damage, like Pyroblast or Last Rites. You could use it as like a mini protected, mini like very uh, Medivh W protected, and it will get value as well. So I think it's still pickable, but Light Bomb is easy to use. It's more consistent, and you don't have to play around too many things. Awesome. Would you recommend this build to somebody playing their first Anduin game quick match right now? Uh, 
I would definitely say yeah, go for this build. Maybe more compass on four, maybe blast recovery at seven. But this build will will most likely be efficient enough in most cases. Awesome. Well, thank you for the rundown on Anduin. Cool to have him dissected down to his essentials there. I appreciate you joining me. Everybody watching here, I'm Heroes Hearth. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell. More Learn to Play Heroes of the Storm content is on its way. And of course, that's season four of the CCL.